Infinited Fiber, born from the VTT Research Center, is trying to achieve a goal where your clothes can be recycled infinitely. And today we're going to explain how we transform textile waste into new fibers in the Infinited Fiber process. So let's start our tour. Welcome. You have landed to the facility where we start to make your old clothes into new ones. There's always some of those clothes that you really can't use anymore those who you can put in the charity, those ones that are just too nasty to wear. And that's where Infinity Fiber Company can help. I'm here with our CTO, Zachary Siren, who's leading our technology and research towards the commercialization. Hi, Zachary. Can you tell us a little bit about our technology? Yes, we are working with man-made cellulosic fibers. It means that we transform the cellulose separated from the cotton-rich textile waste. Our technology is organic solvent-free and uses water-based processes. In traditional viscose manufacturing, carbon disulfide is used, and it's considered as toxic nerve poison. We have replaced carbon disulfide with urea, which is a natural biomolecule. Urea creates the carbamate functionality, which gives the unique characteristics of IFC's fibers. For the infinited fiber process, we need a certain type of waste material. At the moment, we're focusing mainly on textile waste. Before it comes to us, all the materials need to be shredded and all the buttons and zippers removed. Today, we prefer 80% cellulose content, and we can take any color material. In the future, we would like to have fibers as short as possible so that we can pump them into the system that's flowing continuously. When the bales are in, then what we need to do is make them fluffy. This is the first part of the process that we call opening the bales. The rotating plates open the structures of the shredded textile waste. The loose structure ensures that the material is in a form where every single part of it will be affected during the treatment process. The feedstock that we're using at the moment is post-consumer textile waste coming from the textile collection campaigns that are being done here in Finland. Okay, so after making it fluffy, then we start to feed the reactors. At this stage, the shredded textiles still have all the elastane, polyester, colors, and anything else there that might be existing in the old textile. The tanks are fed with the materials, and then we are adding cooking liquor, which in this case is acid. The acid is used to remove the metals, for example, those you have in colors, and it's also there to set the cellulose to a targeted polymerization level. It's important to note that we do not use any organic solvents in our process. The next step is the alkaline treatment of the fibers. Material is being processed to remove the polyfibers from the stream. The polyester gets depolymerized and disappears from the stream. After these sequences, we discharge the reactor and collect all the cooking liquors that have been used. In the future, we can recycle all the cooking liquors again and again in the process. Then we go to washing. Washing sequences remove any remaining impurities, as well as traces of the alkaline liquor. At this stage, we have mainly cellulosic parts of the material left. Finally, the remaining water is pressed out and in the final engineering, the waters will be evaporated and turned into steam to use in other parts of the process. Now the material is at the right moisture content to go to the next stage, which is happening in our plant in Valkiakoski. This is Valkiakoski, a small town of 21,000 inhabitants, located 150 kilometers north from Helsinki. Valkiakoski is also a place that was known for its viscose industry. The first fibers came out of the former Valkiakoski viscose plant already in 1943. The viscose plant went bankrupt in 2013, but the strong knowledge stayed. And that is the reason many of our staff have originated from this lovely town. This pilot factory is our gem, and it's here that we have the core of our process. This is where the magic lives. Ollaan tultu tänne meidän ihan uusimmalle tehtaalle ja minun kanssa täällä on Reino Myllykorpi ja hän kertoo meille hieman siitä, että mitä täällä tehtaalla oikeastaan tehdään ja mikä on vaihe. No tällä hetkellä prosessissa on koneet ja laitteet asennettu paikalleen ja tuotanto pyörii 
periaatteessa täydellä teholla. Että. Sitten on tällä hetkellä rakennetaan se laboratorio koppia tehdään ja sen myötä pieniä laiteasennuksia sitten. Mm. Mitä siellä laboratoriossa tullaan tekemään? No siellä tehdään pieniä testiä ja tehdään näytteitä. Kerrotaan, että minkälaista tavaraa ollaan saatu aikaisemmin, mitä voidaan ehkä muuttaa jossakin vaiheessa prosessia, että saadaan tuotetta paremmaksi. Now the pretreated material has arrived to our Valkiokoski plant, and we can start the second part of our process. It's important to mention that this is the part of the process that's very different from other man-made cellulose manufacturing methods. The first step is that we need to get the materials upstairs. These are now the materials that we created in Otaniemi. It's not really a pulp, but it's a pulp-like material and you can still see the yarn structures as well. From this part of our process forward, all the stages of the process are exactly the same regardless of what feedstock we use. At Infinitive Fiber Company, our process is quite robust. For example, we can handle the elastane impurities because of this stage in our technology. It's also important to point out that we are not using an exantate method where carbon disulfide is used. Carbon disulfide, as you may know, is very unstable and any impurities in it can cause instability that can lead to fire and explosion. Our process is using urea instead. Urea is also known as carbamide and it's because of this origin that our technology is often referred to as carbamate technology. In our process, urea is broken into two pieces, the carbamate group and ammonia. The carbamate group attaches itself to the cellulose chain at a molecular level. Then the ammonia is captured in the system and is merged with water, and we create ammonium water as a sellable side product. The carbamate powder that we create in this part of the process is then called cellulose carbamate. Now that may sound kind of nasty, but it isn't. Cellulose carbamate is actually something that is completely stable and safe. You can store it for later use, which also enables the opportunity to cut the process at this point and continue somewhere else. This is an advantage when we think about where the textile waste is located. Also, nitrogen is an important component in the cellulose carbamate, which affects a lot to the final fiber properties. For example, it enables us to achieve the amazing cotton-like quality. So, now the carbamate is ready and it's ready to be shipped to Espo, where we do the final piece of magic. In the wet spinning process, we regenerate fibers from the cellulose liquid. This part of the process is well known from the viscose industry, and that's why our technology can be easily retrofitted to existing viscose mills. Just a few adjustments in different recipes and we're ready to spin new fibers from the carbamate powder. First, the tank is filled with carbamate powder and sodium hydroxide in a proportion that is defined in our recipe. We start the stirring and the carbamate powder starts to dissolve. The dissolving level is checked and after a while, the carbamate powder has turned into cellulose liquid. Welcome. We are now in Pioruki, which is the last part of our process. I'm here with our pilot production manager, Jani Mantula. Jani is the one who is really uh, taking care of the schedules of today. So how do you do that when you have a big run coming up? Well, the primary goal is to create one solid maizel plan for a longer or shorter time frame. Nowadays, we are also doing small production runs to serve testing needs of our brand partners. That's why delegating responsibilities is crucial for smooth running on different production processes. We have a good, talented, skillful team which makes things look easy. And that inspires me day to day. To remove the remaining impurities, for example, the softened elastane, we need to filter the material and we have a two-stage filtration process. First, we remove the bigger particles. And secondly, the liquid goes through a very thin net that has holes that are at least 10 times smaller than a tip of your hair. In this liquid, your old jeans and t-shirts have forgotten their history and they're ready to be reborn. So let's do some magic. We now have this alkaline cellulose solution that is extruded through very thin nozzles into an acid bath. As the cellulose liquid touches the acid, Neutralization happens and the cellulose crystallizes into new fibers. 
so from every tiny hole comes a new fiber. The different process parameters are set depending on the desired thickness of the fibers. For most textile applications, we are running a textile quality fiber with density of 1.3 DTEX. To create more strength to the fibers, we need to pull the toe of the fibers, also called filament. When we are pulling the filament between two rotating stones in the stretching path, we are orienting the cellulose chains so that they are parallel in the fibers, creating more strength. The more we can stretch, the stronger fibers we get. Currently, our tenacity level is around 2.6 centinewtons per DTEX. The second bath we have is for the first washing process. We are washing the filament to remove excess acids. To make the fiber suitable to different yarn spinning methods, it needs to be cut into a certain length. At the moment, we have the option to do two different fiber lengths, 40 millimeters and 32 millimeters. To ensure quality requirements and smooth operations, we have our own laboratory. Olen täällä Hanna Jäihin kanssa, jonka kanssa ollaan miettimässä sitä, että mitä ihmettä sitä tehdään tuolla meidän laaduntarkastuksessa ja laboratoriossa. Hanna, voitko kertoa pikkasen meidän työtehtävistä? Eli pilotilla me tuetaan meidän pilotin toimintaa ja tehdään näytteitä, mitä pilotilta tulee. Ja sitten me tehdään myös niin kuin tutkimus- ja tuotekehitystyötä, eli tehdään parhaamme mukaan kaikilla välineillä, mitä meille on annettu, niin yritetään kehittää meidän koko prosessia. Ja myös sitten tutkitaan meidän kuitua, eli sitä itse tuotetta niin laitteilla, ja katsotaan, että millaisen meidän se tulos oikeasti on. Finally, we have a stable fiber that will run through multiple washing sequences. The fiber pH level is going to neutral, and in the final stage we are using Avivash, which is kind of like a soap, that reduces the fiber static and friction to the level that is making the yarn spinning go smoothly. The fibers are then dropping downstairs where the excess water is removed, and they are open for drying. We don't have drying drums in our pilot factory, so we're using heating cabinets to dry the fibers. Everything that you've seen today has been filmed during our first 72-hour production run, demonstrating that the process can be run continuously for a few days. Now, our next step is the scale-up. Thank you for watching.